Hello, everyone. My name is Jackie Whitus, and I'm an occupational therapy student with the American Stroke Foundation. Today, we will be discussing money management after a stroke. Managing finances can be hard enough before a stroke, but the changes a stroke brings can make it even more difficult. In this presentation, we will discuss what money management is, how a stroke affects money management, ways to simplify how you manage your money, local Kansas City and online resources, and preventing fraud. In occupational therapy, financial management is identified as an, as an instrumental activity of daily living, or IADL. IADLs are activities that support your daily life within your home or community, and also include occupations such as maintaining your home, driving, and meal preparation. Financial management is described as using fiscal resources, including financial transaction methods like credit cards and digital banking, and planning and using finances with long-term and short-term goals. A stroke can affect your body and brain in a multitude of ways. Cognitive difficulties involving attention, memory, reasoning, judgment, and problem solving can occur. Think about how you use these skills every time you go to the bank, grocery store, or make an online purchase. In order to complete these activities, you need to be able to understand and remember how much things cost, how much money you have to spend, and when bills are due. You also need to be able to utilize your decision-making skills when choosing what to buy and whether to use cash, credit, debit, or write a check. In addition to the cognitive effects a stroke can have on how you manage your money, you might also experience financial hardship directly related to your disability. In a study by the Canadian Journal of Neurological Sciences, researchers interviewed six survivors of stroke on the financial effects they experienced due to their stroke. These survivors reported experiencing worsening financial circumstances due to their stroke, including experiencing difficulties at work or becoming under or unemployed. These effects from the stroke and worsening financial circumstances took a toll on their mental and emotional health. They also experienced difficulty accessing healthcare after their stroke sometimes having to make tough choices based on their current budget. If you've experienced any of these situations, know that you are not alone. In the next few slides, we will discuss resources to help you and your family succeed financially after your stroke. As we discussed earlier, cognitive difficulties can make managing finances difficult. As we have progressed into a technology-driven world, online banking has come with it. Rather than having to call or go visit your bank, most banks, credit unions, and credit cards have options to keep track of your money online. Make use of these resources to keep track of how much money you have coming in and going out. If you don't already, consider making a budget. There are many different budget planners available online, like this one from AARP, which is linked down below. They help you break down how much money you have coming in from pension, retirement, or other sources of income, and how much you are spending in categories like housing, bills, groceries, and personal care. When creating a budget, first start with the, with the fixed costs every month, like your mortgage, phone, and internet. Then once these costs are calculated, you can figure out how much money you can put towards flexible costs like groceries, entertainment, and other shopping. These categories are more easily reduced by buying generic brands, utilizing coupons and sales, and accessing free entertainment in your community. Even if you don't already utilize a worksheet like this one, consider keeping a small notebook where you can keep track of purchases you make. Look back on this notebook at the end of the month to see if you notice any patterns or areas with higher spending. Another method to simplify paying and keeping track of your bills is to set up automatic payments. Many internet, phone, and credit card companies will simply take the amount due out of your account on the same day every month. This makes less work for you and is typically a free service from the company. Finally, you can try utilizing mobile budget apps to keep track of your money. Pictured on this slide are three different budgeting apps, Mint, Budget, and Pocket Guard. All three are free and offer different services, but work, the, but work in the same way. You are able to connect many different accounts and bills to keep track of payments that are due and what you are spending and create budgets for different categories such as housing, shopping, and food. Some of these apps also will give you reminders for when bills are going to be due and notify you if you have high spending in one category. You can also create short and long-term goals within these apps, whether it's saving for a trip or decreasing how much you eat out. Finally, these apps will help you recognize or even cancel recurring charges for subscriptions that you don't utilize and view your credit score. These are all secure, free apps, so feel free to download one and test it out. 
If you don't like it, you can try a different one or go back to the pen and paper model we discussed previously. Another form of online resource you could use is Money Smart Kansas City. This is an all-inclusive website that compiles over 20 different financial planning topics, including disability resources, retirement planning, resources for seniors, and preparing for tax season. You can access the website at moneysmartkc.org. There will also be a link to the site in the description box below. Finally, it's important for us to cover how to prevent fraud. Fraud can happen to anyone if you don't know what to look out for. One way to prevent it is to protect your social security number and any other personal info, like passwords, security answers, and credit card numbers. Keep this information in a secure place and be wary of anyone who calls or emails asking for this information. If you're ever unsure, contact the company directly to confirm who was asking for your information and for what purpose. If the request came in an email, report the email to spam and avoid clicking on any links or pictures you don't recognize. The only way to be sure that no fraud has occurred is to check your credit report annually. You can do this for free from any of the three national credit reporting agencies, Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion. If you notice something doesn't look right on your credit report or suspect that you or a loved one was a victim of fraud, report the suspected fraud immediately to the credit reporting agencies and contact your bank to cancel or freeze credit cards, change pins, and online passwords. The following are resources that were used to compile the information in this presentation. The AARP budgeting worksheet and Money Smart KC will be linked in the description box below. I hope this information is helpful in helping you or a loved one navigate managing money after a stroke. Thank you.